with a big team here with many questions. I think I should ask you to start, <laughs> Deputy Secretary. Well, Mr. President, thank you for welcoming us. Thank you for your time. Uh, as you can see from all of our uh, visitors here, we have our, our senior team from Washington, our uh, senior director, Admiral Laubacher, who rep is here on behalf of the president from the White House, from the National Security Council, Lindsay Ford from the Department of Defense, our Deputy Assistant mm -hmm. Secretary, Lean or from our DAS from State Department, and on and on. So we have our, our best people okay. here who work on this uh, relationship on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis. And of course, our great ambassador okay. uh, and, and her team as well. And so we brought the interagency team. We're very excited about where the relationship is, is headed in so many uh, important ways. And we just met with the foreign minister and had a, had a good discussion, kind of, if you look at the course of our 76 years yeah. now of uh, bilateral ties, uh, I think we're in a we're in a in a good place, um, but I think it's a bit of a floor, uh, and we could do we could do a lot more, and that's what we're here to what we're here to talk about. But it certainly is a very long relation which goes back even government-wise before 1947. But let's look at how we go ahead now. Relationship here between U.S. and us have improved and increased. And I must thank Samantha for the fertilizer she gave me that made the biggest difference because that year in 2023, April, we had a good harvest. That turned the economy around, followed by another harvest. Then we had the 2024, so we are coming in with the good harvest. And then subsequently the tourism that came in. And your visits at that time was good. It helped at least the more adventurous tourists to come here because the prices were very, very attractive. We are now completing our discussions with the IMF and then we will come to the agreement with the Official Creditors Committee. Thereafter, to deal with the international uh, sovereign bonds. With this, I hope also to get the conditions that we agreed to and put into Parliament in law. So no one can go out of it, can't move out unless they are willing to go to Parliament and move an amendment or a repeal. So this way we have to ensure that Sri Lanka doesn't go back into that situation. And then I'll put the rest of the issues also of what we need to do for economic transformation as export-oriented competitive economy, a green economy, and a digital economy. So in that range, we are working on tourism to upgrade it. Finally, we'll have 5 million tourists at about per diem of 500 US dollars. The second is we want to modernize the agriculture completely. Modernized means it has to be what it will be. Uh, we say the target is 2025, bring it up to that level. There's a fair amount of smallholders, but I have now given them their tenure is secure because I'm giving them the freehold deeds. Nearly one and a half million people with freehold deeds means that strengthens the economic system, it strengthens the banking system and we are basically following what you read in Japan, Korea and uh, Taiwan. So far land reform and taking it away from someone, not, not distributing it. So we are going ahead with that initiative and we are looking at help to modernize agriculture completely. In the meantime, I'm also hoping to give out about 150,000 to 200,000 acres of land, maybe more, for commercial cultivation. The next uh, developments we had been discussing is the digital economy. Let me go ahead. Been talking with NASCOM and SLASCOM both. So they will come up with some uh, with the proposals so that we can basically link up to India and to some extent piggyback on India because we want to uh, emphasize on the digital economy. In India too, they still haven't industrialized the south of Tamil Nadu. The moment that happens, I mean, we will need another port. We thought to expand the Colombo port to so become a regional logistics center. So these are some of the initiatives. We basically now promote people to become to be outward looking and to become very competitive. So what we will have to handle is a trade adjustment package for some of the affected industries. And that's why we've applied to join RCEP. So we have RCEP and an agreement with India and an agreement with EU. So that's a fairly large market of which we need point so many percent, that's all. We also talk with China, which we told them, look, 
we must also have an advantage. Uh, Vietnam and uh, Malaysia, Thailand, and uh, Indonesia. So that will complete the countries there. It's amazing. A uh, lot of progress, a lot, lot happening. I, I will say, you know, just since 2022, just uh, two years ago, we've contributed about $270 million in uh, economic assistance from multiple sources, uh, including that fertilizer that you talked about from Ambassador Power, which is great. We are also very happy to announce this new $553 million from the Development Finance Corporation, DFC, for the financing of the West Container Terminal at the Port of Colombo. And spent a lot of time on this. I get to chair the DFC board for the Secretary of State. So, um, uh, and we'll be going over there later later today to, to see that facility. So that's p particularly important. We were very pleased to see Parliament pass uh, legislation like the Anti-Corruption Act to support implementation of the IMF program. We think that's very important. And that also needs to come with uh, other governance uh, reforms. And, and so we are looking for ways to deepen our cooperation with you on the reform effort, whether it's um, technical assistance, law enforcement cooperation, the World Bank Stolen Asset Recovery Assistance Initiative. There's a lot that I think we can do here to support those those reform efforts. So I'm very, very grateful for your leadership in participating in the Operation Prosperity Guardian, the efforts in the, in the Red Sea. This afternoon, we're going to be going out to announce, subject to our approval of Congress, a fourth uh, Coast Guard cutter that we will uh, transfer that I think will give you even more uh, capabilities. And just, again, excited about the prospect of contributing to further ties, whether on maritime domain awareness, whether on uh, counterterrorism training, on w whatever area we can do together to strengthen the peace and security and stability of the Indian Ocean uh, region. Talking of security, we are committed to freedom of navigation in the Indian Ocean. And I've seen the effect of closing of the Suez Canal when it was closed in 1967, after the war, it didn't open up till about 1978 or 79, 10 years. And that had an adverse impact on the Sri Lanka and uh, the Colombo port. So we can't allow anyone to be blocking or in any way obstructing the passage of ships in the Indian Ocean, more particularly places like the Gulf or the Red Sea. Red Sea is the most important to us. So when it was announced, I thought, no, Sri Lanka should at least say, as far as Yemen is concerned, we have backed the stand of the Saudi government. So for us also, they are well, a terrorist force. And uh, we certainly said we, we, we can't deal with uh, Houthis at all. It's really a really important point. And I think your focus on freedom of navigation, whether it's uh, here in the Indian Ocean or the Red Sea, is, uh, is, is critically important. We're helping, um, we've had conversations with the Navy, your Navy about developing Sri Lanka's Navy. own sovereign hydrography, hydrology capabilities. This is something that Sri Lanka can do that, yeah. and then even profitize from it huh. instead of relying on any other country. So I think we and several other countries um, are in discussions to help build Sri Lanka's own capacity to do that on your own. Echo the White House's appreciation very much for um, for all that you've done, and whether or not the Coast Guard cutter is a is a huge security add to OPG, um, what you say is exactly true, sir. It's the idea of the flag that that there are many many countries who have the same viewpoint, and uh, and we're very grateful for that that decision that you made personally. And uh, National Security Advisor Sullivan just wanted me to to raise that with you, so thank you, sir. I just wanted to add, sir, on the point that Ambassador Chung made um, about hydrology, I think we understand very much um, that having sovereign capabilities to look at these questions really matters. And so I know uh, we've got teams in the next couple weeks that are going to be looking at perhaps what kind of assistance along with the cutters that we've already given you would help with that technically, that that's something where we want, really want to be able to work with you.